Welcome to the TCP Academy. I am Mr. Wilson and today we're looking at the Integrated Science paper for 2025 May June. We're looking at question number two and it begins. Figure three shows a diagram of a shoulder joint. Diagram of a shoulder joint. Here we're seeing X being the cartilage and Y of course being the humerus. We are supposed to name the type of joint in figure 3 and the type of joint there is going to be a synovial joint specifically is going to be a ball and socket joint which of course is located one in the shoulder and the other is in the hip region or one in the pectoral girdle and the other in the pelvic girdle. Name one type of joint which can be found in the body other than the one shown in figure 3. Now important to note is that there are several types of joint in the body. You have the inch joint in the knee, the elbow, that sort of a thing, the gliding joint in the wrist. You have the facet joint, which is not really covered on the syllabus, but that one is found here in the vertebral column through which the spinal cord runs. Then you have those fixed joints that are in the head. We refer to them as suture, and they are, uh, we call them um, fibrous joints, while the others are pretty much called synovial joints and then we have the pivot joint in the neck there between the atlas and the axis that allows movement at the head we're supposed to identify the structure level x and y we did already the cartilage and of course the humerus nothing more to be written there other than movement state one function of each of the structure labeled x and y interesting to note or important to note here is that the function that has been sought is the function in relation to the diagram that is on the paper. So we're not going to be talking about uh, the nostril and the throat and the ears when we talk about the cartilage. We're going to be talking about its function as it were for the joint. So it reduces friction between the bones, prevent the bones from rubbing together. That would, of course, otherwise cause damage to the bone. It also prevents shock are serve as a shock, shock absorption surface shock absorption when you jump you run that sort of a thing it pretty much prevent those bone from hitting together that would pretty much damage the end of a bone secondly the humerus forms a support for the muscle attachment now the, there must be a place for the muscle to be attached to provide that leverage when the bone is supposed to be moved it also serves as a support structure for the upper arm. You would understand if you were supposed to lift something, it's going to be very important in helping with the lifting. It also provides structure for the upper arm and of course serves as that point that connects the shoulder to the elbow. So that bone is very, very important there. We're supposed to compare the movement of the shoulder joint with the elbow joint. Now, the shoulder joint, of course, is going to be a ball and socket joint and the elbow inch joint. So the ball and socket joint, as we're in the shoulder, it provides movement in all plane. One would say 360 are pretty much, it could pretty much facilitate a circular movement. While the elbow joint, the inch joint, will only allow movement, one would say in one plane or two plane, some might say, which is pretty much is going to go back and forth as if it were a door. So some might say it offers movement in one plane, some might say it's two, but it's a back and forth movement. Pretty much like your mouth will go up and down or a door will pretty much open and close. So it allows that sort of a movement uh, back and forth. Next, we are supposed to look at this one, which has to do with blood type. Bruce required surgery and was sent for a blood test. The result indicated that his blood only contained anti-B antibodies. We are supposed to identify Bruce's blood type based on the result of a blood test sent. Now, this might have been very easy for most persons because they are going to remember that the antigen on the red blood cell must be different than the antibody in the blood plasma so if we have anti a antibodies then our, of course our antigen is going to be b so the blood type here is going to be b so this one most easy for a lot of persons we're supposed to list two other types of blood in human now remember that we have the abo blood group and this pretty much would uh this would pretty much contain the A, the AB, and the O. So some might also talk about 
uh we talk about blood type there's a other there, there's a other blood group. So there are two blood groups. The blood groups are the ABO blood group. And we have that which is the real resource or the RH blood group. So we're not looking at the blood group. We're looking at the types of blood. All right. So let us not get confused. So if we're looking at the blood group, this would have been the ABO blood group. And then there's another blood group we call the resource blood group, which come with the plus and negative signs. Uh, the easy way to look at it. So type of blood here would have been A. A, B, and O, as it were, under the ABO blood group. We're supposed to explain why the type of blood would be compatible with Bruce blood. Right? What we are supposed to explain why only certain type of blood would be compatible with Bruce blood type. And the response must contain one blood type that would be compatible with Bruce's blood. So only some blood type would be compatible because, like we said before, the antigen on the red blood cell must be different than the antibody in the plasma. If they are the same, they are going to pretty much cause clumping or agglutination. Let's look at it. So the antibodies in the plasma must be different from the antigen on the red blood cell. If they are the same, the antibodies will bind with the antigen and cause clumping or agglutination of a red blood cell. This may lead to blockage in the blood vessel and clumping of the blood cells, which will disintegrate. And this, of course, can be fatal. So as a result, only blood type O and blood type B can be given to a person with blood type B. And this is to ensure that there is no clotting of the blood. If you were supposed to look, uh, blood type O does not have any antigen. So it would work nicely with blood type B, which has the A antibodies. And blood type B has B antigen, so it works very nicely with the anti-B antibodies. If you look at the others, the A could not be given A because it has an A antigen and the B has an A antibody. So that would cause blood clotting. You could not give this person blood type AB because of the antigen A in that which would pretty much cause problem with the anti-A antibodies so that is pretty much our reason here for screening and making sure that the blood type matches that there won't be any clotting or agglutination that would definitely cause the death of individuals thanks much for watching please be reminded to like share and of course subscribe that is all you pay for this content that come to you relatively affordable now we want to remind you that we would have post question number one already we did look at that and we're going to be posting the other questions so you want to make sure that you like share click that notification bell so you'll be informed when the other questions are posted make sure you send the question to somebody i want you to tell me in the comment how well did you handle this question was it easy for you did you struggle on the question? You're not sure I can't remember what you did. But whichever way, tell me, how was it for you? Until we next meet, what good?